Hello, my name is Savi Arora and I'm very honoured to have the opportunity to talk to uh, Gurukha Singh, uh, who's come all the way from the US to the UK. He's part of a tour that he's doing at the moment. He's going to the Sikh retreat. I think he's doing some few sessions over in Southall, uh, yoga sessions as well. And I believe he's doing one more thing, which is he's going to the Golden Temple exhibition uh, in central London as well over the next few days. So we are here in the middle of August, the uh, rainy season in London. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, sometimes summer can be a washout. Uh, and I had a great opportunity to meet him. Uh, he's very inspirational to me. I really feel that you know all the great things that he's done in terms of uh, introduced so many initiatives and so many online resources. Um, I think Sikhs should really kind of feel good that we have somebody as great as uh, Guruka who kind of has led the way in so many initiatives as well as new ideas that he has as well. So uh, let me turn to you and ask you, and we were talking earlier on, where did that inspiration for uh, SeatNet come from? Because I know there's uh, Guru Mustak and you've got a team as well, but uh, when it started off in Birds and Boards, what happened? I got my first computer in 1985. Right. And it was gotten by the secretary of our ashram to keep her books, but she was not there, so I set it up. Okay, right. By one o'clock that morning, I had fallen through the screen to the other side, and I was living in the other side of the screen. And I came to Yogi Bhajan and I said to him, you know, sir, this is amazing. You can, there's this thing called a modem, and you can connect to other people. And I can talk to people in Japan, in, in London, in India, everywhere, all around the world. And he said, yeah, we should have a Sikh network. Okay. And so it began with a bank of modems hooked up to an old computer from that time, 1986, and people would call on the telephone line and connect, and everything was text. You get all the, the kind of buzz and clicks on yeah. the line. This is before the internet, oh, yeah. Absolutely. 1986. Yeah. I mean, I did connect once, I think, you know, on, the, on that kind of dial-up modem. Yeah, we had an ASCII Kunda that came up and said, welcome to SeekNet. Very good. <laughs> the green screens. <laughs> yeah, the green screens. So SeekNet's been around a long time. And on the internet, now it's 16 years. And what happened was I moved to New Mexico, started a consulting business there, and I didn't have time to do SickNet anymore. So I said, we need some young person to come and take this over. And I stumbled on Gurmastik's website, which was, he did from his house in Brooklyn. Right. And I said, do you want to come? I called him up. I said, come on to New Mexico. And we gave him a job at our consulting company and told him, take this onto the web, and he did that in his spare time. That's mm -hmm. how Seekness started. Very good. And it, it's kind of expanded now, isn't it? You've got um, Gurbani Center, and you've got you know, so many brilliant things that are in there, like the Seeknet Stories for children. Uh, you've also got the podcast. You've got iPhone app. You've got a BlackBerry app. I think you've got uh, Android apps as well. So it's taking that kind of core knowledge and spreading it through lots of different devices now. Actually, we have a lot of fun at Seeknet. Right. Because we get to sit around and say, what new fun thing can we make and give away to people? Mm. You know, that'll be inspiring and be fun for people. So the idea of the Gurbani Media Center started many years ago mm -hmm. in a brainstorm. Yeah. You know, we said we should have a better way for everybody. Put all the Gurbani in one place and have everybody be able to make their own playlists and everything. And it took several years for that to, you know, come to fruition. But our best, our fun thing is we sit around and we have brainstorms. You think, what could we do that was fun? But you're pretty cutting edge, because you do think of, you know, you say, oh, there's a new technology around the corner, uh, maybe we can adapt that. Well, actually, we're very practical. Right. We don't adopt something because it's new technology. The question is, how do you touch people's hearts, mm. and how do you inspire people? So we looked at the pattern of what people do when they come to SeekNet. And most people who come, come for the Hukum Nama, right. or to listen to Gurbani. So we said, okay, let's improve the Hukum Nama so you can print it in beautiful color, make it as a gift, frameable, you know, with calligraphy. Let's take the Gurbani media and make it really accessible and portable. And we're just about to come out, I don't know if people know this yet, right. we're just coming out with a Gurbani Media Center app for, oh, okay. for That's iPhone, really good. in which you, all your playlists and all the Gurbani that you have picked out, and you mm -hmm. can share your playlist with other people, and you can upload all your own tracks, if you That's recorded right. tracks in the Gurdwara or wherever you That's can upload That's a great idea. Yeah, brilliant. And the most fun we're having 
is the last year we've been building this computer game, yeah, I saw interactive the game. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's fun. And but you know, I used to do that it, for five years. I worked at a computer game company. Right. And again, Yogi Bhajan said to me at one time. He said, "You know, we should make a computer game." based on Siki. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was doing the consult. I said, yes or sure, we'll do that. <laughs> Never happened, right? Now many, many years later, I called up my old cronies from the computer game business and we got together a team and we built this game. Totally professional, right. beautiful, inspiring game. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks really very interesting. Yeah, yeah well, right. it's, it's, it's funny and it's fun and in the game you, you're a hero, and you live in a village, and everybody is depressed mm. and not communicating. And you basically have to learn how to meditate, learn how to play shabbats, okay. learn to do seva, right. learn to see into people's hearts and you know understand what their real needs are. And eventually, you know, you not only find yourself and who you are, but the village is saved as well. And we arranged it so that the kids can do seva outside the game, in the real world. Mm. So they earn badges in the game, and then outside the game they can do actual seva or learn gutka, or learn a shabbat, and also earn badges on their That's own right, personal right. page, yeah. which mm. they can then share on Facebook. So they got their own little profiles that they can link to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you've got all this technology, and you know it's all good stuff. And my my uh, my business lecturer used to say the word stuff a lot. You know, you know all this great stuff. Uh, and I mean it in a, in a respectful way. No, I think you seek out good stuff. Yeah, you that's, seek what, out, that's yeah. what your business is. Yeah. Good stuff so you can show it to everyone. Absolutely. I appreciate it. But, you know, with it being there and with it being a great resource and the ability for people to kind of, in one sense, there's an underlying aspect of spirituality as well, right? That they can learn about something and maybe that can provide them as a as a link for them to come become better people or even become spiritual or actually get better understanding of Sikhism. But the, the okay. whole idea of Sikhnet is to provide many points of entry. Right, okay. So people can come, they may not be Sikh, they may not even have heard the word Sikh, right. not even know anything. They can come to Sikhnet and find something that will inspire them. Anybody can come and find something that will inspire them. It's very non-judgmental, we have no agenda to push. We don't care what, you know, if somebody asked me in the class the other night, they said, there are so many flavors of Sikhism, mm. you know, uh, you, how do you know what, what, how you do it, what kind of Sikhism you right. do? I said, first of all, I don't believe in the word ism anyway. Okay. Second of all, it's like many flavors of ice cream, mm. you know, they're all, they're all ice cream, well, they? take whatever <laughs> flavor you like, Yeah. you know. Um, but I guess my, my question was more about, you know, how do you, once you have this resource, you know where the resource is, but how do, how do people come to it? How do, is it something that they're realizing that on their own, that they need to become more spiritual, then they seek out information uh, and knowledge, or I either have an experience, or basically someone leads them to it? It's always like, you've got a product, you look at it from a commercial perspective, how do you know that product actually exists? Or, how do you know you need that product? I mean, it's a, it's a, diff it's a well, difficult one. I think you're asking two different questions. Yeah. One's awareness of one's own spirituality and one's own evolution in one's consciousness. That's a very personal journey. Mm. And you may find inspiration or resources on Sikhnet and you may find them elsewhere. But in terms of awareness of Sikhnet and the resources that are there, that's been a very spontaneous thing. If you look at the graph of how many people come to Sikhnet, every year it just goes up and right. up. Yeah. And some of our content is rebroadcast on television in UK and in India. Mm. And, you know, people find out about it there, or they may hear about it from someone else, but more likely their kids, you know, have, have shown them, you know. So I've, I've seen that some of the stuff that you've got is also syndicated as well. Not necessarily, that's a bit of a strong word, but you might find that someone's written, written something really interesting in a blog, and you'll feature it. Because, for example, when I wrote an article, and uh, I remember we were corresponding over that article that I wrote, which wasn't negative, it was more here are all the opportunities that Sikh media have got to be able to communicate heritage and all the great things, um, all the good sports people, all the inspirational things, um, and to be more uh, varied in the kind of content that they bring out. And I wrote the article and you published it, so thank, thanks for that. So it's quite interesting that you're also bringing in 
you're looking at what's across the net as well, or what's across the, the different channels, which you could actually rebroadcast. We, we try to shine a light on those things that will inspire people, because there's a lot of negative news. Why not shine a light on things that people are doing that are positive? Yeah. And but you were talking about Poja Singh, yeah. you know, and that he inspires people just by who he is. Mm. It's that sort of thing that we want to shine a light on because the purpose of SikhNet is to inspire people and to share the experience of Sikhi with people. So however people have that experience, you want, you want to lift people, not put mm. them down. There's so much negative news. Oh, and on a, on a uh, perspective of you know, keeping it going. I mean, it's a lot of cost to to just manage that every every Sick day. It is entirely know? supported by donations yeah, so and sponsors. Because look, if my philosophy is this: if you really want to do something great, you have to. And then people away. want to participate in that seva. You're, you're, you're hoping oh my for God. the good faith. Would you? Or it is totally an act of faith. It's like putting your step out over the abyss. Mm -hmm. You know. And we used to have a different business model. It used to be, how can we monetize this and how can we sell this and everything. I came, that's then, then I came just back to SeekNet because I was away from SeekNet for many years. I came back in 2003. Right. I said, look, we're here to, to serve the Cyber Sangit. And if people want to participate in this seva, they will give whatever they can give. So whether it's a student who's giving $5 you know, a month or whether it's someone who's able to make a larger donation, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars. However, someone is inspired, they they can participate in that sale. This mm -hmm. game we just made, we we had set a budget originally of about forty-five to sixty thousand dollars. It right. ended up costing twice wow. what we had budgeted. That's so we just said, okay, if this is in Guru's hands. Okay. You know, will the money will come. So we are actively looking for sponsors to support yeah, the game. I strongly support that as well, you know, <laughs> and the fact that you should, you know, yeah, you should give if you can. It's, you know. This is a gift to the children. There's nothing else like it and, you know, it's something new and we took a chance. Mm -hmm. If I had to sum up what SeekNet is about, I would say it's about taking chances. Right. We basically decided that our business model was give away things for free. Okay. And that's a very new business model, you know, right. it comes with internet. Well, it's interesting, a lot of the, the new internet companies are give things away for free, don't they? No, yeah, but, you know. but but you have to, there's a dark side to yeah, that too, is, which yeah. is that they kind monetize people's information in the background yeah. and yeah. sell it. Signet doesn't do that. Yeah. Okay, it's been fantastic uh, talking to you, and it's so brilliant you gave me a few minutes just to uh, kind of explore this whole area of Signet, and again, I'll say as I said before, you know, very inspirational. Um, and I hope everyone out there who's uh, seen this interview will be inspired to support SeatNet uh, as well as the fact that go to SeatNet and check out all the great things that are actually there and uh, be inspired further. Uh, so we'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Satnam.